guys and welcome to Hardy Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and famous disease and that is polio, which is also commonly known as poliomyelitis. So let's get started. So what is polio? Polio, which is also commonly known as poliomyelitis, is a highly infectious viral disease that is caused by the polio virus and most commonly affects children under the age of 5 years of age. The polio virus causes severe nerve injury, leading to total paralysis, which can occur in a matter of hours, a difficulty in breathing, and sometimes even death. In the early 20th century, polio is one of the most feared diseases in industrialized countries, paralyzing hundreds of thousands of children every year. But, soon after the introduction of the effective vaccines in the 1950s and the 1960s, however, polio was brought under control and practically eliminated as a public health problem in these countries. Today, polio has been eradicated in every single country of the world except for Nigeria, Pakistan and Afghanistan. So from this definition of polio, we get that it's also commonly known as poliomyelitis and it's actually a viral disease which is caused by this polio virus. So it most commonly affects children under the age of 5 years of age and this used to occur worldwide and it was actually a serious public health crisis in the early 20th century. So the polio virus actually causes severe nerve injury which leads to total paralysis in its patients and they will also suffer a great difficulty in their breathing and sometimes in severe cases death can actually occur. So the good news is that polio is practically eradicated from the entire globe except for a few countries, which include Nigeria, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. So now that we know what the basics of polio is, let's take a close look at how one can contract the disease. So the poliomyelitis virus colonized the gastrointestinal tract, specifically the oropharynx and the intestine. Wild polio virus is spread through feces and saliva. It is primarily transmitted through a fecal oral spread, and is an important consideration where sanitation is poor. So sometimes it can also be transmitted through a sneeze or a cough as the virus also lives in the throat and the intestines. So because the virus actually infiltrates the oropharynx, in some cases, very rarely though, it can actually be transmitted through a sneeze or a cough. However, this is much rarer. So the polio virus is actually spread through a fecal oral transmission. So because the virus actually infiltrates the GI tract, it's actually found in the feces and this feces is actually how it can be spread. So if this feces gets into clean water sources, which are then ingested by someone, they can contract the disease in this way. These feces can go on to contaminate crops or fruits and vegetables that are then ingested without being washed properly. And in this way, a person can contract the virus. And of course, it can also be transmitted through somebody going to the bathroom and forgetting to wash their hands or not having clear sanitary water in order to wash their hands. So the feces remains on there and then they go on to prepare their food or touch their food and they ingest the virus in this way. So these are all the ways in which the virus can actually be spread. And this is called a fecal oral spread. So from the feces, the virus actually is able to enter the mouth or contaminate sources of food or water that is ingested by someone else and in this way the virus is transmitted. So now that we know how one can get polio, let's take a close look at some signs and symptoms of the disease. So polio in its most severe forms can cause paralysis and death. However, many patients with polio are asymptomatic or don't become noticeably sick. Polio can be broken down into a milder form which is called non-paralytic polio and a more severe form which is called paralytic polio that occurs in approximately 1% of cases. So let's explore the non-paralytic polio first. So signs and symptoms of the non-paralytic polio can last from one to 10 days. And these signs and symptoms can often be flu-like and can include a fever, a sore throat, a headache, vomiting, fatigue, and meningitis. So meningitis means the inflammation of the meninges. So these are the outer coverings of the brain. So these are the various signs and symptoms which affect patients who suffer from non-paralytic polio. So then we'll move on to paralytic polio. So about 1% of polio cases can develop into a paralytic polio. So paralytic polio leads to paralysis in the spinal cord, which means spinal polio, 
brainstem, which is referred to as bulbar polio, or both, which is called bulbospinal polio. So the initial symptoms in these patients are similar to those of the non-paralytic polio, but after a week, more severe symptoms will appear. So initially, these patients will also start off with a fever, a sore throat, headache, vomiting, fatigue, and a meningitis, but then they will go on to develop a loss of reflexes, severe spasms and muscle pain, loose and floppy limbs, which can sometimes occur just on one side of the body, sudden paralysis, temporary or permanent, and deformed limbs, especially in the hips, ankles, and the feet. So exploring these signs and symptoms further, I want you guys to keep this image in mind because this is a classic case of what the paralytic polio would look like. So this picture actually shows us which common muscle groups are actually weakened by the polio virus. So we have the shoulder muscles, the muscles behind the arm, so there'll be weakness in straightening out the arm, the back muscles on either side of the backbone, sometimes the thumb muscles, they will also suffer from contractures causing tight cords in their limbs. They will also have trouble with muscles that lift the foot, muscles that straighten the knee, and muscles that straighten or bend the hip or that spread or close the legs. So this picture actually tells us how debilitating the disease can actually be because it shows us which muscle groups are severely affected by the disease. So to keep in mind those symptoms again, we have meningitis, the flaccid paralysis, which are the floppy limbs, the loss of reflexes, paresthesia, which are the tingling in the legs, and severe muscle aches and paralysis. So these are actually all patients who have suffered from poliomyelitis and we're able to see the devastating effects of the disease in the long-term outcome of these patients. So we see that the majority of them have quite badly involved muscle groups, especially in the lower limbs, and many of them also require great respiratory support in order to keep their respiratory muscles active. So moving on, let's talk about the diagnosis of polio. So polio is often recognized because of its symptoms such as neck and back stiffness, abnormal reflexes, and trouble with swallowing and breathing. So a doctor who suspects polio will perform laboratory tests that check for the polio virus by examining throat secretions, stool samples, or cerebrospinal fluid. So the CSF will usually show an increased number of the white blood cells primarily lymphocytes, and a mildly elevated level of proteins. The detection of the virus in the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid is also diagnostic of paralytic polio. Antibodies to polio virus can also be diagnostic from blood samples and are generally detected in the blood of infected patients early in the course of infection. So the clinical supposition of poliomyelitis is done when the doctor examines the patient and specific signs and symptoms such as neck stiffness, back stiffness, abnormal reflexes, and trouble with swallowing and breathing can all point to a diagnosis of polio. But we will definitely require some laboratory tests, so samples of blood are taken, and here we can look for specific antibodies against the polio virus. We can do throat secretions, stool samples, where we can look for the virus here, or we can even take samples of CSF and either look for the virus from these CSF samples or look for the increased number of lymphocytes or elevated protein levels in the CSF. And these are the various ways in which we can confirm the diagnosis of a poliomyelitis. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of polio. So no cure for polio currently exists. The focus on managing the disease is on increasing comfort speeding up recovery, and preventing complications. Supportive treatments include pain relievers, portable ventilators to assist with breathing, and moderate exercise, which is physical therapy, to prevent any deformity or loss of muscle function. The prevention of polio. So polio vaccines are vaccines which are used to prevent poliomyelitis. There are two types of vaccines used, an inactivated poliovirus, which is given by injection, which is called the IPV, and a weakened poliovirus, which is given by mouth, which is called the OPV. The World Health Organization, or WHO, recommends all children be fully vaccinated against polio. These two vaccines have successfully eliminated polio from most of the world and reduced the number of cases reported each year from an estimated 350,000 in 1988 to just 33 in 2018.
So the inactivated poliovirus, or the IPV, is administered in a total of four doses, the first at two months, the second at four months, the third at six through eight months, and the last one from the ages of four through six. The oral polio vaccine is also administered in four total doses, and these four total doses are usually given approximately four weeks apart, starting at birth, then at six weeks, 10 weeks, and 14 weeks. So as we can see by the statistics, this worldwide initiative to completely eradicate polio from the world seems to be going very well, and currently it just exists in three countries, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Pakistan. So hopefully in the next few years, we will be able to completely and successfully eradicate polio altogether. So vaccination comes highly recommended and is currently done worldwide to all children. And that brings us to the end of this video on poliomyelitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.